Hey guys, this is Wally from SwartyPanda.com. Uh, so a few people have reached out uh, recently um, offline to kind of like share their their um, thoughts uh, on like the recent market action lately. Uh, I think some of them are a little bit nervous and some of them are outright scared. Um, so I figured like it might help um, just like maybe uh, the general audience like what what my um, thoughts on like the the recent market action uh so it's been a while since we've taken like a uh uh you know a punch to the gut um but i wanted to wrap some numbers around it to to kind of like to see how how things are like relative to like prior market corrections or like you know prior market bear markets so just like the 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 uh, textbook definitions are you know if it if we go down 10% it's a uh, correction if we go down uh, 20% it will be like a bear market um, and then you know in prior videos I've talked about like how like bear markets could get really bad um, if you you know your time your trades um, or investments like poorly you, you know there's a chance like in the next few years you could be down uh, 80% um, hopefully not not more than that uh, Cause it d depending on you know if you're leveraged or not, um, so I guess like for folks that are like, you know, if this is like your first like really big down move, um, I think you're probably um, over leveraged or you're or like you have probably too much money in the market or maybe like you you got in like too late and that's why you're, you're seeing like these big, um, you know. Like, like a devastating hole in your portfolio uh, but I just wanted to go over like a, f like a few of the major food groups on, my, on the Tastyworks platform and uh, get some numbers around it so it might not be as bad as you think um, again if you're um, if you're seeing like like a, like a big hole in your portfolio right now uh, consider um, moving into like more I guess like dividend paying stocks or like maybe uh, selling you know parts of your position if you have some uh, uh profits um if you're you're i don't know how 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 down you are but you know consider maybe like some selling some covered calls or some uh uh maybe some selling some uh credit spreads or buying um uh put debit spreads um uh, these are just like some ideas like off the top of my mind or you could just like say the heck with it um i'm just gonna cash out and and wait and wait for like maybe like a better entry point uh and it, and it really depends on what you like to invest in and what to tr and what to trade so i'll leave that to you um i'll just show you like uh, real quick and like how i go through like uh, this to kind of like assess like how I guess like the state of the market and maybe if it's really that bad or or maybe just like people are overreacting uh, my guess is that like my guess is that people are overreacting because they they're probably like maybe like they have too much invested in like stocks like uh, Tesla or something like that um, and then maybe consider uh, either lightening up or adding um, adding to the cash positions or or maybe just uh, consider like start slowly moving into like dividend paying stocks or dividend paying uh, you know anything that 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 will create like some type of yield for yourself um because I, I my guess is that like 2021 should still be a um like a like up year and then after that it'll, it'll be anybody's guess um it'll, it'll probably be like the start of the bear market um but you know i'm i'm, I'm hoping that i'm wrong but um let's just all head over to the tastyworks platform all right See you soon. All right, guys, welcome back to my Tastyworks platform. So I'm just gonna go through a few charts just to show you kind of like generally what I look at um, to see if like the corrections maybe overdone or if it's just a you know minor flesh wound or if it's like the start of something like really gruesome. Uh, so let's just start with um, the the yen. Uh, so let's see. So I'm just gonna go from like the previous um, high. So that's uh, 975.35.975. And then let's see what the, uh, the close is. 
from here uh, so it's 93785 so 3 so it doesn't um, I guess I like at first glance it doesn't look like it's that bad um, it's not the most pleasant thing in the world but it's not the end of the world um, so I'm just going to type it into my spreadsheet and then I'll share with you a little bit later uh, so while I'm doing that, uh, let me just plug in, uh, the figures, uh, while I go along. Yes, it's not even, man, it's, it's not that, it just looks, I think it just looks really bad. Uh, so let's see the Euro. Okay, the Euro doesn't look, um looks a little bit better um because I, I guess i'm just trying to figure out what you know, you know what's causing like these i guess a lot of people to be scared um now it's not like again it's not that pleasant but it's not i don't think it's um uh like the end of the world just yet uh so let's just see 1.368 One point two three six eight, and then what's the low over here, or the close? One point twenty eight one five. Let me copy this formula over. Uh, okay, so that the, hmm, it's kind of weird. Um, so the so it looks like it's it's. For the euro, it's actually down a little bit more than the yen. Uh, so let's just take a look at what what um, Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin did has been doing really well lately. Uh, so let's see from the high fifty seven five seven nine. Fifty seven five seven nine, and then what is it? What did it close out over here? Um, well, technically, it's not does does not close because technically it's uh, a 24-hour market let's just let me just type in whatever the last price is 46 680 46 680 okay so that that's a little bit more nastier it's a night uh, almost a, a bear market by traditional uh, standards but for I guess like Bitcoin standards it's not like it's not really much of a thing um so it could be just like rotation um now this is just my my guess what's happening um i think because like as we head closer to april 15th um i guess we're gonna see people um liquidating some of the better performers uh recently and they'll they'll probably reposition it into either cash or like or like maybe dividend paying stocks um because right now like like any bond like bonds and treasuries like they're it's not even worth putting it in like, um so it's just my guess i guess people just like reposition them because up to remember 2020 like it was a really good year for a lot of folks um so i think like once they start to you know process like their tax returns they're, they're, they're figuring oh man I didn't save enough um, to meet my tax obligations. So I think that's part of it. Um, and then this is again, this is to my guess. Uh, I could be wrong, um, but we'll, we'll 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 see what happens after April fifteenth. Uh, um, so let's see for the ten years. So it's one thirty seven oh eighty five. I'm just gonna put 137 and then uh, uh, what do we have here so like the close over here was 132 again this is I'm just like really butchering like some of these numbers here but it's just a rough f estimate um, so I guess like again I think it maybe just like it, it felt 
a lot worse than than it than it really was. Um, I I'm also don't forget like I think a lot of um people, uh, and some funds uh also like they're probably, uh, they might be using more leverage than they should. So I think that's why, uh, I guess like people they they're they're really freaking out because they're not used to. Um, seeing these type of moves, but like it's not, it's really not that bad. Uh, well, yet. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're maybe if you're uh, uh, using more leverage than you th than you think you should be, you know, you'll just just trim a few of positions, especially if you're, uh, especially if you have a uh, long options. Um, it might be worth. Maybe not not selling all of your position, but maybe um, putting like some type of like mental stop on a on a spreadsheet somewhere, and and also consider maybe selling um, uh, like a like a short position against it, so that you can turn it into maybe like a spread, uh, at least like like mute some of the the volatility. Uh, that that would be. That, and then that's just what I'm doing. Uh, but of course, you can. You're more than welcome to just continue whatever you you're doing. Uh, I again, I I'm not um, your financial advisor. So this just to kind of maybe help help some folks um, ballpark their the risks and maybe maybe um, uh, consider taking some steps to maybe uh, reallocate your portfolio. Um, so again, 394 over here, and then let, let's just see what uh, closed at uh, 380. And then there's a few um, things coming up too. So uh, as of the date of this recording, uh, the house passed like their, I guess like the one point whatever uh, trillion in in new in new stimulus. Uh, so I don't know if the the market will price that in eventually, um, or, or maybe the the market's just waiting, you know, for the full, uh, you know, the, for the Senate to see what what they're gonna do, and then eventually, I, I think it it should uh, be signed into law, uh, maybe mid to late March, um, and then that that'll also just coincide nicely with the uh, with the end of like Q one. Um, and then maybe like hedge funds will reposition again, and maybe they'll they'll go long the market to to push it back up. So maybe we'll consolidate a little bit, and then what I'm really interested in to see what what happens after April fifteenth. I guess once people file the taxes, and then maybe a combination of the new stimulus, and then maybe uh, also uh, I guess maybe people will prepare for like maybe maybe uh some vacation spending uh depending on how well the uh the, the vaccine rollout goes um and then let me see let me th just think of one more one more thing to add to the list and then i'll just give you a quick recap um so let's let's look at the small caps uh so high 230 and then what did we close at recently? Uh, so 218. And then there's also in, in taste that works by the way. Um, like if you notice on the left hand side, like this watch list, they also have like all these like uh, market indicators. Um, I've th There's a lot of stuff in here. So I guess like at, on your own time, you can um, if we also have taste of works, you can kind of like go through some of these as well. Um, and like there, there's just like so much, it's impossible for me to go through. Um, I guess like uh, some of the ones that I used to look at is like the, you know, the the new highs and the new lows and then the advance and decline stuff. But again, um, like it looks a little messy. So that's why I'm probably not gonna just like waste your time like going through all of all of this um the different ones. Um I guess this one would probably be I guess like the difference between the advanced and declining issues. Like I I'm I can't like figure out a way to 
to use this as some type of like you know like a um i guess like a timing indicator uh i guess maybe if we wanted to like play a bounce off of the i guess like the the bollinger bands um but but again it's not like i don't want to get too crazy because uh, sometimes like technical indicators you know they're not foolproof or anything um but let me just uh, flip back to the spreadsheet that I was filling out um, while I was talking about like just like going through the charts um, so as you can see like the I guess like the the big major um, I guess like uh, market food groups um, uh, that I that I generally like to cycle through just to get an idea of what um, how bad things are uh, so basically what I did was um, I just took like the uh, just like as a rough, rough, um, some rough figures, like the the recent highs and then like where we're at, uh, at, at the time of this recording. And then I just did some simple math to show you like how, how, uh, how much we're falling. Um, and then depending on the index, like so for example, uh, on the SP, S&P 500, it's only down like three, three point five five percent um, the NASDAQ, like, you know, is very tech ha heavy, so I would expect it to be down, um, almost twice as much, so it's like 7.10, uh, treasuries are down, uh, 3.65, um, the euro was down 2.32, uh, the yen surprisingly was only down, like, 0.15, um, and then, you know, uh, Bitcoin was down, uh, 18.93%, um, and then the the, the small caps like the IWM is only down 5.22 uh, so you know I guess we could have like a little bit more to to go in terms of um, uh, like a down move so like I guess like a like a 10% uh, you know textbook 10% 10, 10 um, uh, down move um, wouldn't surprise me uh, I guess like if it goes down like even more from there that that's when I would start to get a little bit uh, more nervous and I don't uh, and I, I guess I, I miss I might have also missed time myself where only I've only started building my um, short positions uh, so I might not have enough to kind of like fully like you know in the event of like a full bear market like 20% or more uh, I, I could be also like in like a heap of doo-doo so you know don't think that you know people that have been doing this for a long time that you know we're, we're perfect or anything like our timing could be off too so um but you know i'm i'm hoping uh that uh, you know it won't be that bad i think there's maybe just like a uh hopefully just like a either minor dip or like uh just like a 10 percent correction i think we'll probably see the start of a bear market maybe later on uh later this year uh depending on how like the I guess like the any, any new like spending bills. I think this will, we've probably used up a lot of. Uh, well, I guess like the U.S. government has already used up a lot of bullets. I'm not sure what else they can really do to help the economy along. I'm just hoping that uh, we'll have enough. Um, like you know, we'll we'll, ha we'll be in a good place in terms of like vaccine rollouts, um, and then like hopefully that'll. Uh, reopen more more places more businesses and then more more travel um because i i still think that 2021 should, we should be able to squeeze out like one more i guess like a decent year and then like after that that's when like things might get like really hairy but, like maybe people like I, I know a lot of people talk about uh how like we're overextended and like you know we're, uh, this the market's gonna go to you know, hell in a handbasket type of thing. Um, but I'm I'm a little bit more optimistic. Um, but I'm preparing some, you know, some some put positions, and then also I'm I'm starting to rotate more into um, uh, dividend paying stocks. Um, uh, I guess like maybe just for this year, like I'm also looking into like the some of the marijuana stocks. I think. Um, the, the the I mean there's been some news, uh, but I think I think like the the cryptocurrencies or, or digital assets have taken a lot of um like the spotlight off of them. So I think there there might be some still some some decent growth in the marijuana space. 
Um, so yeah, so guys, I don't think it. Um, I don't. Well, this is just my guess. Um, by the time like this video uh, comes out, like I, you know, I could have a lot of egg on my face. I might wind up eating my my words, um, and then like you know, my portfolio might suffer um, uh, accordingly. Uh, but I don't. I don't think it'll be like a full blown bear market uh, just yet. Uh, I think it'll come like soon. This might be just to kind of scare some people off, and then um. Um, but but you know we'll we'll see. So hopefully this this video won't be too long. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, please consider uh, giving it a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye now.